Hi, what is image denoising? I'm Dr. Paul Hill, and in the next 20 minutes, we're going to find out what it is and how to do it. The objectives of this course are as follows. Firstly, I want you to gain an intuitive knowledge on image denoising itself. Then, understand the sources and characteristics of the noise within the images that we want to denoise. We want to then get a, an overview of a wide range of denoising algorithms and implement those in MATLAB, which we'll be seeing at the end of the course. Finally, I want you to better understand the assessment methods of denoising. Obviously, it's very, very important to assess how well we've done in all the methods that we're going to have a look at and we develop. This course covers the following. Firstly, within an introduction, we're going to have a look at the domains of denoising, the sources of the noise within those domains, and the basic idea, something really, really concrete. A nice image to show you exactly what denoising means. Then we're going to have a look at some very specific methods. So we're going to look at filtering methods such as the mean filter, the median filter, and different transform domain methods. Specifically, we're going to be looking at wavelet transform domain denoising methods. Then we're going to look at more state-of-the-art methods, such as neural network methods. They do have some issues with them, and uh, um, they are um, uh, state-of-the-art, but they may be considered to have some implementation issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're going to be looking at train systems, uh, such as DNCNN and untrained systems, such as noise to noise, etc., etc. Then, as I said before, we're going to look at the evaluation methods using metrics such as PSNR, SSIM, other methods, perceptual, different types of metrics, etc., etc. And then finally, we're going to have a look at some code and then wrap it all up with a summary. Okay. The next thing I wanted to cover is the prerequisites for this course. So you'll really need or you'll get much more out of this course if you have some basic MATLAB programming skills. And also, because we're going to couch a lot of the explanation in mathematical terms, then you will need first level or first year maths. That would definitely give you some benefit. Before we go into any of the details, I want to show you some state-of-the-art denoising algorithms. So this is a, a website of a company called Topaz, and allegedly they produce the world's best denoising algorithm in the domain of uh, domestic um, and commercial um, cameras. So if we look at something like this, this is a denoising algorithm. You can see the noisy version on the left and the denoised version on the right. And as we swipe left and right, we can see there's some absolutely fantastic results that the state of the art is, is getting these days. And this, this is what's available commercially. It's, a, it's, it's available as a plug-in, uh, but a standalone thing as well. And you can kind of see that... Um, you know, the results are just uh, just astounding. But maybe if you just look down here, maybe you see you're losing some some details, and that's an issue we're going to cover next. Which is basically, before we go into any of the other details, what I want you to have a look at is this: is the boy smiling? Well, what am I asking you to look at? Well, there's a boy in this noise here. There's a smiling boy here, and you can see it plain as day. But with any of the algorithms, any of the state-of-the-art algorithms that we're going to talk about, but also the commercial algorithms that we've just seen, that basically, if you want to get rid of the noise, you will necessarily get rid of the smile. And that is a task that I've been given to you, and it's being interfered with, with denoising. And this, this, this gets to the heart of the fact that, you know, maybe we haven't gone as far with denoising as we need to, and there's lots of research out there. Okay, so let's have a look. BM3D, that was the state of the art in about 2010. Absolutely wipes out the smile. Can't see anything at all. Obviously, get rid of the noise. DNCNN, that's the fastest gun in the West in terms of uh, uh, denoising in the last few years. That absolutely wiped things out even worse. You can see that actually there's still quite a long way to go. Okay, let's talk about some domains of denoising. So here are three or four different domains that all have inherent noise and lots of it. So you're familiar with what ultrasounds look like. They are absolutely covered in noise. And if you could get rid of that, obviously, then you know it'd be of great benefit to any diagnosis. 
or any analysis medically. Then low light, obviously when you turn the ISO up of a camera and you turn the light down, then you get a lot of grainy noise and that really interferes with the quality. And then domain and um, imagery such as infrared type of imagery like this, um, there's always a lot of noise in, in that domain. And um, these are just three examples. There's, there's hundreds of more examples. And you can consider noise to be a very limiting factor to a lot of imagery. In terms of where the noise comes from, well, there's lots and lots of different types of noise. There's lots of noise that comes from the sensor itself, and we can compartmentalize that into different types. So sensor noise can be sort of photon noise when the actual sensor is, is actually getting the, the um the image itself, but also it's the processing chain that happens when we actually capture. So there'll be some compression and quantization, and these things have all got lots of noise associated with them. If you think about compression, I'm sure you're familiar with JPEG, and you get these blocky artifacts that uh, you can consider to be noise. Also, I've already gone over the idea of low light and high ISO noise. When you, when you have very dark environments and you turn up the sensitivity of the sensor, then this sensor noise just comes to the fore. Environmental effects. Things that are separate from the sensor noise in the environment that you might think, well, actually, there's, there's a kind of ground truth out there, but the, uh, the, the, the environment that I'm shooting in is, is, is not giving me the ability to see that ground truth. So image noise itself can be both signal independent or signal dependent. So these things are exemplified by additive and multiplicative noise. So we'll see that next in terms of different types of noise and the noise distributions. So there's all sorts of noise distributions associated with different types of noise and types of sensor. So here's a bunch of applicable PDFs or probability distribution. So we have obviously Gaussian, and then we have a, a sort of the Gaussian family, such as the uh, generalized Gaussian and Laplacian. And then we have more simple, uh, simply defined probability distribution, such as the impulse, uh, sort of like bit errors, um, uniform noise, uh, Rayleigh, gamma, and exponential. These these occur in different mixtures and in different modalities. And to understand the types and distribution of noise is vitally important to actually design an effective denoising system. So some of the work that I've done in, in my research is actually very, very much model the noise, noise, I should say, with an appropriate probability distribution and actually use that to inform the denoising process. Okay, here is the basic idea of denoising. So this is my son. I hope he doesn't mind being included in this talk. And he is the subject of noise. Basically, you can think of things like IR noise or noise that's in a low light situation as having an, an, an original noisy image. But you can consider it to be a clean image. This is a, a, a sort of well-lit image. And it's kind of clean, but we've added noise to it. So we have noise plus, sorry, noise plus image, and then we have the noisy image, and then this is the thing we're interested in. We're interested in denoising, so we denoise the image and we get something that looks a bit like the original. And that's exactly the point. It looks a bit like it. How do we evaluate that? We evaluate that with some metrics. So we compare the clean image to the denoised image, and we do that using different types of metrics, such as PSNR, SSIM, different types of perceptual metrics that are, are turning up these days. Okay. Let's have a look at some methods. Okay, firstly, the simplest method you can think of, the mean filter. So if we look at the definition of the mean filter in terms of this equation, each pixel of the output here is the mean of a small region of the input averaged. So that region is R here. So if we have a region of three by three, then we get a, an, an averaging or a low pass filter that looks a bit like this. And then if we increase R to nine by nine and R as 13 by 13, then we get this and we can see a progressive blurring. For regions that are plain, i.e. there's very little texture, such as his cheek, then it works quite well. It gets rid of the noise. If you, if you think about the noisy image here, then this has really got rid of it quite well. But it's just it's just blurred everything. It's got rid of the definition of the of the edges, etc., etc. So one way of getting rid of that, or 
doing a better job is doing the medium filter. So the medium filter does the same sort of thing. It, it, it works on a region. And you can see that actually here, although it's, it's a little bit blurred, if I get out of the way slightly, if you look at his shoulder there, if you compare the two, then the mean filter actually is really blurring this agent, uh, region quite badly. Okay, coming a bit more up to date and a bit more sophisticated in terms of the method is non-local means methods. So what non-local means methods do, exemplified by the BM3D method, is they do a block matching as an initial processing step. So we have lots and lots of blocks, you can see on this image here, and they're all matched together and they're formed together into a cube, a bit like this. So each layer of the cube is a very similar tile from the original image. And then when we get all the similar images together in the block, then we filter it in three dimensions because of all the commonality and the redundancy within the common block sizes and the, sorry, the, the common block um, elements, then when we have filtered it, then we put the slices back into the image and we get the recomposed image. Um, this um, sigma here is just basically how much the algorithm has guessed that there is noise and, and we can use it as, as how uh, as, a, as a control as how much denoising we do and you see okay we got rid of most of the noise here and almost all the noise here and, he and here this this looks really good although you can kind of see some sort of what they call in the in the business sort of this buttery effect where it's kind of smudging things around but it's obviously it's a lot better than the median filter or the the mean filter and if you compare it to the original it, it, it's looking pretty good i'd say this one this one here is is probably the best depends how how close you are to the monitor Okay, so let's have a look at transform domain denoising. So the idea of transform domain denoising is in the signal domain, you might have the noise and the original image very much overlapping. The components of those two things may very much overlap. Something looks a bit like this. But if we transform into a new domain where we can more easily separate them, then that's obviously of great benefit. And the Wavelet Transform is, is an excellent tool for doing that. So one of the things we can do is within the Wavelet domain, it's been recognized that small valued coefficients are more likely to be noisy components of the original signal. So what we do is we actually do some thresholding, which is a very simple method, but we can do some more complex and interesting methods as well. So if we have a look at um, what, I, what I would recommend you do is to understand wavelets in the image domain, there's a fantastic uh, wavelet toolbox in MATLAB. And if you put in wave menu, you will get to this, which is a wavelet denoising demonstrator within MATLAB. So here is the original image. And here is the synthesized image. And here is the wavelet transform domain. And with the go without going into the details of what a wavelet is, basically we, we filter in uh, horizontal and vertical directions multiple times at different scales. And we get all these collections of coefficients, which are known as subbands. And if we filter, or in this case, if we threshold within those, we can actually denoise. So if we have a look at the denoise demo here, we have a graph which or a series of graph which shows the probability distributions of all of the different subbands so we can actually change the threshold so this is the threshold these dotted lines here are the threshold that we will say okay anything within those thresholds we want to get rid of because we're saying that small values are where the noise are so if we if we just change these values here and then we denoise then we get something back that actually is is been denoised very effectively, so that's that's a great demo. Just go, just go and play with it. I haven't got time to go into it now, but that's 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 a fantastic demo. Get a real hands-on sort of feeling as to um, what wavelets are all about, and also wavelet denoising is all about. Okay, so in terms of how I would describe that, in terms of the example that I've given, is so if we have a noisy image here, we have a wavelet transform, then we have the decomposed coefficients, and then coefficient shrinkage, which is a posh name for thresholding, and then we have the modified coefficients, and then the inverse wavelet transform, and then the denoised image here. 
So in terms of different types of thresholding, basically we have hard thresholding, which is really easy to understand. So if this is the, 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 the range here, positive and negative T, um, this is just basically thresholding, which is this purple line, which is just says anything within that range just gets zeroed out. Soft thre thresholding is a kind of softer landing kind of thresholding where we actually modify the retained coefficients that look like um, this, well, the, the curve of transformation looks like this. Okay. Coming a bit closer up to date in terms of state of the art, let's have a look at some neural network methods. Okay, so neural network methods have used a database of clean and noisy images to train generally. So methods such as DNCNN, FFD, NET, etc., etc., they generally use CNNs, convolutional neural networks. But they also use a massive domain of, sorry, a database of clean images and noisy images. So there's ground truth. So if we have a noisy image here, then we know what the noise that we put into it when we're training so we train it with the noise and then we have a system that's trained up to actually extract the noise from an image so once we have a database that's trained or this this neural network is trained using the database then we put in a new image we get the noise from it and then we subtract the noise from the original image and this is what is what is known as a residual training system those train systems have their um, uh, that the, they have issues when the training data doesn't really fit the data that we actually get to see. So low light images, it's really difficult to get to get uh, training data for that. So that there are other newer methods that uh, don't need training data, or they they use the 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 image itself, the single image as as a self trained data. So we have deep in image prior that actually uses a truncated learning of a single image with a CNN. And noise to noise uses the same image. Um, sorry, it, noise to use noise to noise uses a trained image, but just two or more noisy images. And noise, noise to self uses the uses the image itself. Okay, so performance evaluation. Now these are some terms that you may be aware of or may not be aware of. PSNR, I'm sure you've come across. Peak signal to noise ratio. All of these top three basically you just have two images, you have the ground truth and the denoised version, and then outputs a number. With all of these different systems, we have a number that when the number increases, you get a better match. So PSNR, generally around about 30, things start to look good. The, the higher the number, the better they look. SSIM, that's kind of a more uh, principled metric, which is supposed to better align with the, um, with the perception of quality and there's a variant called um, MS SSIM, SSIM you might come across. Also more recently neural networks themselves have used feature-based metrics which are really interesting so it's not actually a one-to-one -one mapping it's whether things look very similar to each other in a more abstracted way within a CNN. Uh, obviously mean opinion scores if you've got a bunch of people that can tell you if, you, if they like the image then that's really important too. Okay in summary, image denoising can be achieved using signal processing, median mean, non-local filtering, and transform domain methods. The current state of the art is deep neural network-based systems. Accurate evaluation methods are really essential for all of these things. And the current state of the art methods can still remove vital details. Is the boy smiling? This is a big question. The next generation of denoising algorithms is got to make sure that actually the, the denoised version is as good as the original for doing the tasks that are vital. Okay, so in terms of self-study, I've given you some examples here, just a minute, it's the other way, of uh, some data processing for image denoising. So this is available uh, below, on the link below. So download this, basically this is some MATLAB code and we are inputting an image. Um, we're having a look at it here. We are adding some noise, and then we're doing a whole bunch of denoising. So this is median denoising, mean denoising. Um, we're having a look at those. Then we're actually doing DNCNN and getting PSNR and SSIM out of the, the end. So that's it. Um, what I want you to do is to complete these. Stop the video here. See if you can complete that. Thanks for listening.
It's been great to present this. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, have a look at the code. Um, Google all the things that I've talked about. Great.